Hi everybody, this is Monica from Huckleberry Mountain Botanicals. Um, today I decided to make some lotion partly because I need some lotion and also because it's a, another fun project to do. Um, I want to wait a couple or at least a minute I guess for people to show up. Hi Sean, <laughs> my, my faithful fan. Um, <laughs> Um, I do want to give a chance for, for some people to show up. So in the meantime, let's see what I can talk about. Um, we're working really hard right now in our garden, and I'm super excited about the chickens being in there because I've been going in and just pulling out some of the older compost that's in there and just using it as sort of a mulch on my garden. I, I want to post a picture, and I will do this a little bit later, of what my garden was three years ago. It's really, it's really kind of cool because it used to be a um, – a parking spot in the front of our house. A lot of people park there. Hi, Miranda. And I really wanted an herb garden that kept the, the herbs close to me. I didn't want to have to go, I, you know, I don't like traipsing all over the place. And honestly, if things aren't growing right out my door, I forget about them. Um, I, I, you know, it's funny, I refer to myself a lot as sort of a lazy gardener. And it's not that I don't enjoy my plants. I really do. It's, it's just that when you have, when you're living on a homestead, you have a lot of stuff going on. And with that lot of stuff, you don't necessarily remember things that are way far away. So one of the things that we always tell people when we're doing consults is keep things in close. And so when I wanted to make my just specific herb garden, I wanted it in close. And so it is right outside my front door. I walk out, I can sit on my porch, I can smell my flowers, I can enjoy all the birds and the bees. Not the, the sexy <laughs> kind of birds and bees, but the birds, literal birds and the literal bees. Um, and, and, you know, the, all, all the things that come in, it's, it's really nice. So my recommendation is if you're going to start in a garden, start somewhere that's close to you. But I will share a photo because I just bumped into it today, you know, Facebook memories. Thank you, Facebook. And I, when it came up, I, I was like, wow, there was nothing there. We had just put in the fence. We had brought in this dead topsoil, and I've been working for three years with Sean's help to really build our soil and be a soil cultivator. Because at first, you know, my plants weren't growing very well, but if you focus on the plant health and not the soil health, you'll always be focusing on the plant health. You'll constantly be having to add. But if you focus on building your soil over time, your work decreases and your plants flourish. And I'm seeing that this year. My motherwort is coming up already better right now than it was at the very end of, of last year. So. I'm seeing a lot of, of exciting things in my garden, which is why I'm bringing my um, herb students, instead of doing our class in the old school house here, we're gonna come up and do it at my place this weekend and just have some fun with the plants, not only in my garden, but on my homestead. And um, just kinda, you know, we're herbalists, we're supposed to spend time with our plants, right? So it'll be, it'll be a really relaxing, fun Saturday for me to be with my herbal students and um, exploring our plants in the plant world. Okay, so let's get started on making lotion. So, you know, lotion is not hard to do. It is easy though to not, for it not to emulsify sometimes. And so if you're trying it for the very first time, and honestly, I've made lotion quite a few times, a lot, and there's times that it's not super successful. So if you have problems the first time, don't think, oh, see, I obviously can't make lotion. No. You can make lotion, you just gotta try it again. Sometimes it's a temperature problem, sometimes it's um, the type of wax you use or whatever. The lotion I'm doing today, I am not putting any preservative in it. So this is not one that you want to follow if you're making product that you're trying to sell. You are required to put preservatives in it and other places will have really good um, suggestions for you regarding that. Uh, vitamin E and um, what is the other one? Grapefruit essential oil are not adequate to, you know, make it use as a preservative. It can maybe help, but not not really. One of the most important things when you're making lotion is make sure everything is clean, really clean, because if you introduce some bacteria in the very beginning, now you're going to have bacterial growth, and that you really don't want that. Um, also, use distilled water. Don't use water out of your sink because that already has things that are living and you don't want that either. So I'm actually using 
a lavender hydrosol. Hydrosols are distilled, right? Because they're you're putting them in, they're going through steam distillation, going down, and then dripping into a jar. Great. And it smells good. So I've got this lavender hydrosol that I'm using, and I'm going to be adding some lemon essential oil because I think lavender and lemon go really well together, and I love the refreshing feel of lemon. I also am using infused oil. You don't have to, but I prefer that because now you're bringing in some of the medicinal value from what you know from whatever herbs you're trying to do. So you can choose a variety of herbs to um, infuse in oil and use that. Today I'm doing comfrey because I find that comfrey works really, really well in a face lotion. I like using it as a salve or a lotion either way. So emulsifying wax. Uh, emulsifying wax is your glue. It is something that combines into both oil and water. So it helps them to come together because obviously we know oil and water don't mix. So you need to have some sort of emulsifying wax. Bees wax will not work. Okay, this is, I think, vegetable-based, non-GMO, um, uh, you know, good for products. So there's lots of ones you can choose from. So get on Amazon or whatever and look around. I, I like, you know, this emulsifying wax works just fine. The other thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that your oil and emulsifying wax combination is the same temperature as your water, usually around 160. And I'm hoping I can keep those there. I, I warmed them up in advance, and I'm going to be adding some boiling water here. Normally, you would be doing this on the stove. Remember how I told you guys the other day to use a jar when you're dealing with waxes, just so the cleanup is easier. I'm doing the same thing now, and I've got those, I normally, you know, I wouldn't have to do this, but I do have the jar lids down there in case I need to put it on the stove. So I'm using um, a half ounce of emulsifying wax and one and a half ounces of my infused oil. I probably should have had a, oh, yeah, Lindy's gonna get in my thing. I don't wanna drop the emulsifying wax into my pot. This is maybe too big, but okay. All right, so I'm just gonna add these in here. And again, the handy dandy chopstick, right? Yep, take that away. And I'm just gonna stir it up and hope that this, it will be hot enough for it to fully melt. You guys, when we, we talk about making, you know, herbal preparations, I know sometimes it's it can be intimidating if you've never done it before, but when you step out and you start doing it, it's so much easier. Has anybody ever made lotion? I'm not sure if I'm even gonna be able to get it. Hi, Rhonda. Um, you know, responses. Kana didn't show up. <laughs> I'll invite her right now. Kana's always my, she's, she's always a, the regular too. Um, I'm really hoping this is gonna work. If not, I'm gonna have to get it on the stove. This water was boiling and I heated the oil before I started because I don't wanna sit here just having you guys watch me stir. <laughs> Fun times. Fun times. Oh, it's actually melting. Oh, good. Okay. Now comes the really fun part, especially if you like to whisk. We all like to whisk, right? <laughs> Who doesn't like to whisk? All right. So I'm, you, you need to have one of these. These um, are so handy. It's, it reads temperature with the little, I don't know, ray thing. Oh, Kane is feeding the neighbor's animals. Oh. They are feeding our neighbors animals. Well, darn. Okay, this actually is 134, and I really want it to be 160. This is running at 155. Now, I will say that though it's okay for them to be hot, as long as they're both the same temperature, that's really what we're looking for. However, I'm gonna do a really shortcut, and don't do this. Do it over a double boiler. I'm gonna stick this in the microwave for just um, about five, 10 seconds to get it heated up because I'm making a video. But you don't have to microwave it. You can just use the stove. That's not a problem. So you see nothing. <laughs> you know, I, I don't always like to be using microwaves, but it is the handy thing about having modern day um, appliances. But again, I'm, I'm not real crazy about it. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So this one, we're at 162, and this, we're at 163, 161. 
Okay, so I'm gonna mix. Are you guys ready? I'm just gonna be slowly drizzling the oil in here and start mixing it. As it cools, it should start thickening up into a lotion. So here we go. You can definitely see the color change. I'm gonna rotate this. One of the tricks to not spilling everywhere is finding that spot where the, um, what do you call those things? The lip of the, or the, this thing. The threads. Yes. Are, um, are farther down. Okay, so here we are, we're whisking. This is what you'll be doing. There is another option besides just sitting here whisking. If you have one of these little guys that, uh, what, what are these called? I mean, that, this one is just a generic brand, but whatever, the, the small blender things where you can just put this in. And so when we were making this last year with the apprentices, we, we were all whisking. And, you know, we began to see it thicken, and as it cooled, then, then we stuck it in here and just, and it turned into an insta lotion. <laughs> Very nice. Did someone just give me an angry face? No, a heart. Oh, I was going to say, angry? Why are you angry? <laughs> so here we are. We're, you know, we're, we're just whisking. And as it cools, it will thicken. And if you want it to speed up a little bit, like I said, just stick it in the blender and blend it. And I may do that in just a second. Adrian says, thanks for sharing. Adrian. Oh, hi, Adrian. You're welcome. Thanks for appreciating my sharing. <laughs> All right. So, and if this is every like herbalist nightmare, you're doing a demonstration and it doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, and if it doesn't work for me, then you don't have to feel bad about even trying, right? <laughs> All right. So it's not thickening yet, but I'm going to check the temperature here. Oh, we're at about 137. So it should start thickening. You should always stick it in the blender. Yeah, I might stick it in the blender. I'm going to let it cool a little bit more. And then I'll put it in the blender and we'll zip it up and then... We'll see. Thickened. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, there are times where there is just, you know, it's like fail and, and that's okay. You know, that's part of the fun of trying. It's even that way with recipes in the kitchen and, and anything you try, you know, sometimes it's a flop and sometimes it's really, really awesome. When, when I was doing it with my apprentices last year, Every single one of them was at this point going, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And then suddenly a few minutes later, it started thickening. Uh oh, the excitement in the kitchen. It was exciting. <laughs> Everybody was so happy. So let me give you some suggestions about this. You need to, we talked about you last night at Mycology. Oh, interesting. Hopefully it was good. <laughs> um, but you need to be using this fairly quickly, in a couple of weeks. Otherwise, you need to be storing it in the refrigerator um, this is why I make the recipe small. And if you're making this much at once and you don't think you'll use it, I mean, come on, ladies, slather that on. You, can, you could use this in probably a week. It's not that much, right? So especially as summer hits, we're all going to get dry. And you can just be putting this on, and your skin will be nice and smooth, especially if you do, like, comfrey, which is so skin healing. Um, that it, You shouldn't have a problem. But don't go having it last a month or something. It's, it's going to start getting moldy and don't put mold products on your skin. Ew. That just, you know, your skin absorbs everything. Here All we go. Compliments. Oh, good. <laughs> that, that's nice to hear. Okay, this is going to be really loud, unfortunately. So, I won't be talking while I'm doing, how come I can't get this thing on? You just have to like... <sighs> It's a delicate process. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's like, wow, thank you. All right, here we go. I think it's still too hot, but it is starting to thicken, and it needs to cool down a little bit more. It or yeah, it's definitely getting, well, I wish you guys could see, it, it's starting to get kind of like, it's like um, cream now. Yes, like when you're whipping cream in that sort of soft, pour-like stage, that's still, that's thick. 
that's what we're at. It's still kind of warm though, so. However, if it doesn't thicken, that's okay. I can still slather it on my body. <laughs> 116. 116. All right, well. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna add lemon, and I'll probably do it after it's turned to lotion. Turn to lotion. Um, and just add it in there and, and stir it. And you can use any kind of essential oils you want. And frankly, it already smells good because I've got this smell of the lavender hydrosol. I love using my hydrosols in all my herbal products. I'd rather use that than just plain distilled water from the store. I, I think it not only adds that um, healing to it, but it also brings in such beautiful scents. It just adds a special touch to all your products, you know? It's, it's really nice. Adrian, I'm so surprised um, that you talked about me and my mycology simply because I'm not a, I, don't, I, I don't know a lot about mushrooms. You know so much more about mushrooms. You're so knowledgeable when it comes to mushrooms. They kind of freaked me out a little bit. So that's, that's really nice. I, I really need to start going to that so that I don't feel like I'm going to um, toxify myself by just going out and gathering mushrooms. Oh, you guys, it's starting to thicken. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not failing. But you wouldn't fail if you're still thinking. <laughs> Plus, you wouldn't have an audience of people either. It's done in the privacy of your own home, so if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? Also, I tell you guys all, all the time, invite friends over. You know, do, do some um, herbal preparations. This is so much fun. Everybody loves lotion. When my sister came visiting last year, this was the one product she wanted to make. It's just she, she was like, I want to make lotion when I come. So we did. We, we made lotion, and hers worked too. And, it, you know, it's exciting when you take two liquid things, throw them together, and it creates something like this, a totally different – oh, science is awesome, isn't it? So awesome. Oh, I'm so happy. It is thickening. It's turning into a lotion. It, it's like the best texture ever. It's so beautiful. I – it's so hard to see. It's kind of like us taking a photo of our view. Here. You know, I take here. a photo and then I look at it and go, that doesn't look like what it looks like. <laughs> no, here. imagine, imagine like a delicious creamy mousse or something. Yeah, it's so nice. It really is. And you know, these make really awesome gifts too. If like if you're having some guests over and you just want to send something small and quick home. I probably will end up giving some of this lotion to at least one of my students. I always try and do something. I like my students. I'm so blessed to have such a great group of, of herbal students to, um, to work with you know, a couple times a month. Oh yeah, see here we are just whisking away. I think it was better than the blender. It probably just wasn't cool enough yet, but that's okay. It looks Oh yeah, see, look at that. It's just sticking, sticking to it. It's wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna add my lemon, and you can add anywhere from five to 10 drops. You can add less, you can add more, I don't really care. The other, you know, really important thing. What is that? It, is it coming out? There we go. The other important thing is to make sure that you completely let this cool before you cover it. Do not cover it until it's cool. And this is like every other product. If you cover it, then you've got that condensation, and again, you increase the likelihood of bacterial growth with that warmth in there. You don't want to do that. So don't be in a rush. Just let it cool down, and then I'm going to put it just in a small jar, maybe two. I'm not sure if this will fit. <laughs> um, all of it will fit in there, but um, and then label it, and make sure to put a date, and then every time you open it, look at it, smell it, make sure it's not off. As soon as it's off, you need to get rid of it. Don't, don't go, oh, I want to use all of it. You know, this, not only is it fun just to make your own products, but it's nice knowing exactly what's in it. And you, like I said, you can add some commercial um, preservatives, especially you're required by law if you're making products and you're selling them somewhere. So you have to do the good preservatives. But when you're doing it at home for yourself or just for friends or family, just make sure to warn them like, hey, use that, you know, in a couple weeks. And honestly, so I could probably use this in a week, especially if I decided to go ahead and slather it all over my entire body, 
right? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't really have to be on my face. All right, guys, that is it. I just made some lotion and it worked and I'm so happy it worked. <laughs> I actually, actually didn't think it wouldn't work until it looked like it wasn't working. I need a um, spatula. So yeah, I tell people all the time, if I can do this stuff, you can do it. It's, it's not like I've got some sort of um, science superpower. I, I really don't. I, this is all stuff that over the years I've just learned. And if you- Kana's here. Hi, Kana. At least you showed up. Um, you know, practicing is, is really the key. And then on top of that, if you have someone who lives near you, um, I live near some of you, and Kana is one of my herbal students, actually. Um, you know, going to their classes or going to workshops, um, following my lives. And so you can start feeling a little more comfortable incorporating herbs into your everyday life. So it becomes a natural part and an exciting thing to do. You don't have to be afraid of stepping out. That's how we learn things everywhere. But, you know, even cooking, you follow a recipe and then you just kind of go rogue, right? You do your own thing and, and you make it your own. And that's what you need to do with herbalism. Oh, my goodness, you guys, this is like, it's like magic butter right here. It's beautiful. Um, the other thing that you could put it in is a pump. And if you're going to use a jar like this, make sure this jar is really clean. And on top of that, use a spoon or something to scoop it out. You want to try and keep your hands and other germy nasties out of, out of your lotion. Because every time you stick your fingers in there, you're introducing germs. So try to find a cute little scoop or some such thing that you can use. And then make sure to clean it off. Don't, don't again, rub it on your hands or your body without cleaning it between. So that you're, you have something that isn't, isn't getting you know, gross with bacterial growth. So that is it. And I'm going to label this as a comfrey lavender lemon um, lotion. And it's usable on my face. It's usable on my legs. Well, I could use it anywhere. I won't name all my body parts. You don't need to hear me all. <laughs> you have the oh, same body parts yeah. I do. <laughs> um, so anyway, it, it's usable anywhere. And depending on what kind of things, <laughs> what, whatever, what kind of things you add to it, you know, you might not want to use it on your face if you've done um, a little bit more harsh things or, you know, things that maybe would have some sensitivity. Be aware too. If you're allergic to certain things, like Adrienne, she's got an issue with certain plants. And so be aware of that, and you're, so you're not introducing that, and you're not bringing it into your lotion and causing reactions and think, oh, it's the natural product I'm using. Well, it's not. Maybe you're allergic to the Asteraceae family, and you've introduced something from the Aster family. Maybe you're allergic to lavender, like one of my herbal students. So don't bring you know, lavender into your lotion, all right? So... If you're not following me on Facebook, follow me. I post all of these on YouTube under the Prepared Homestead. There's also the Prepared Homestead. And I post stuff over there as well, um, and my husband too. And yeah, follow my Facebook. Join my free content if you haven't. And if you're interested in a more advanced herbal program, I have an online program that walks you through all of the the body systems and therapeutics and preparations, botany, all of that. So until next time, uh, health and joy. I'll see you next Tuesday.